Valve tells us what we don't want to hear about the Steam Deck, but already knew. The Last of Us gets some PC requirements. AI getting injected into all of your favorite programs, and AMD finally keeps their promise. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're going to start off today talking about what we have heard before from Valve, but is coming up in more interviews, especially now once the Steam Deck has passed its first anniversary. In an interview asking what's going on with the Steam Deck, Valve's designer has said the device's success has made them even more excited to look closely at what can be improved, but there is likely no chance where they increase the performance on the Steam Deck. Specifically saying the Steam Deck is not going to feel obsolete for years to come, and a true next-gen deck with a significant bump in horsepower wouldn't be for a few years. This is echoing of previous comments that Valve has made regarding the Steam Deck. We know for the most part there is not going to be a higher performance Steam Deck that's going to be coming out. The improvements they are looking towards are more in the realm of batteries and screens, potentially OLED, potentially higher resolution, but not in terms of giving us a faster chip. This is not the first time Valve has said this. It just keeps coming up in interviews, especially again as we pass the one year mark from when the Steam Deck went on sale for the first time. And now we are seeing more responses to what the future of the Steam Deck is going to look like. Does this bum you out? Did you want more performance? Let me know down below in the comments, but you're going to need need more performance in order to run The Last of Us Part 1 on PC, which again, to remind you, is going to be released on March 28th and not on March 3rd like it was originally supposed to, especially considering the fact that we are a week removed from that, I just realized, and not still at the beginning of March. But you can see here the PC specs for recommended, you're looking at a Ryzen 5 3600X or an i7-8700. GPU side, you're looking at a 5800XT. Did that exist? Was there a 5800XT? What? I thought the 57 600 XT was the highest. Now I'm confused. Or a 6600 XT. And then on the Nvidia side, you're looking at a 2070 Super or a 3060. If you want ultra settings for 4K at 60, you're looking at a 7900 XT or a 4080 with the 5900 X and 12600 K as your CPU and 100 gigs of storage to actually install the game. Is this enough for you? Is this where you're playing it? Are you enticed by The Last of Us Part 1 on PC? Again, let me know down below in the comments. And I'm going to talk about this next article simply for the reason of I thought this already existed. Microsoft Word is getting the ability for you to be able to paste plain text into it. I thought this already existed. I thought this was already a thing. Turns out you couldn't do it in Word. It's going to be the same shortcut as everywhere else. Control Shift V. Why is this just now happening in 2023? I'm baffled. And why is Reese giving us the tech deals? Because that's his job. Thanks, buddy. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing you the hottest tech deals on the internet. And happy Friday, guys. We're starting off with a bit of a classic today because everyone's had one. Everyone knows someone who's had one or has one or whatever. It's the Crucial MX500 SSD. You can pick up the two terabyte version for only $102.99, which is 49% off. And honestly, just stop buying hard drives at this point. Look, look. This is a hill I will die on. And then next up, because we all know we need a little bit of love with the B650 situation, you can pick up this combo deal of an MSI Pro B650 MA Wi-Fi, along with the Ryzen 5 7600X for only $337.99, which is $84.99 off, and honestly, solid. And those are the deals for today. You can find the links to these and more in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Enjoy your weekend. And just like I inject UFD deals into every episode of hot news, developers are injecting AI into literally every program that they've ever made. Discord announcing AI tweaks to their bot that's going to allow you to have more open conversations with Clyde bot, responding to better commands, DM you in case there was an error. Additionally, the auto mod moderation tool is getting some AI enhancements to make sure that enforcement is better. And what seems to be the most useful version of this tech is Discord implementing it in auto-generated conversation summaries so you can catch up with conversations that have taken place before you've arrived in the Discord and you're up to speed by the time you're reading it, which appears to be helpful for anybody who can't stick in a Discord for hours at a time. Additionally, Discord announcing there's going to be an AI incubator where they're going to put a $5 million commitment to help developers start bringing out more tech potentially for Discord. Grammarly also getting an update to bring AI-powered writing, not just based on the 
proofreading component which they offer. Great Relay Go is going to be able to use the context, style, voice, everything that you built into how you like to communicate as a business and then transform that into your ability to have the AI do that for you. And so you have to do your job even less. And Bing seems to be doing the job bringing people on over to it with Microsoft announcing that the search engine now has 100 million daily active users, which does appear to be a large uptick. Additionally, noting that one third of Bing's daily active users are brand new to the search engine. Part of this is because of the chat function of ChatGPT being enabled into Bing. Microsoft saying that they're seeing roughly three chats per session with 45 million chats since they introduced this into Bing. Let me know down below in the comments, have you been using Bing more since they rolled out the AI into it? I wanna hear from you about that. And Microsoft trying to get you to use Edge even more with them announcing that they're gonna allow for AMD and NVIDIA GPUs to use the upscale web version. This is kind of like NVIDIA's new VSR virtual super resolution where you can increase the resolution of the videos that you're watching. However, there are more stipulations on what Microsoft is specifically gonna be rolling out with their version. So you're gonna need a 20 series and up or an RX 5700 GPU and up on AMD and Nvidia. No Intel GPUs are supported, but it also only works on Windows and you can't use it with videos that have active DRM. And then you have to use Edge. And if you're on a laptop, you have to plug it in because it is going to consume more power, but it relies on GPU agnostic technology, meaning that again, you can work it on Nvidia or AMD GPUs. Or if you have an RTX 20 series, you can't use Nvidia's VSR at the moment and you'll be able to use edges upscaling for that. And we're gonna upscale the memory that's on some GPUs because GDDR7 getting announced should be coming out sometime at some point in the near future. The first GDDR7 product being announced by Cadence, which is going to have a speed of 36 gigabits per second, which happens to be about double of what 18 gigabit per second GDDR6 is. However, the first implementation of GDDR7 will not be as fast as 36 gigabits, it'll take some time to ramp up. And then just you wait for Nvidia to come out with GDDR7X in their GPUs. It's gonna be even faster. The numbers always go up. The line always increases, unless you're looking at laptops and Intel has their MXM modules for the Arc GPUs. This is actually being announced on behalf of Gunny or saying that they're gonna have a mobile PCI Express module. That's what MXM stands for, that you can slot into MXM slots on some laptops. I haven't seen a laptop with an MXM slot in many, many moons, but if you have one, you could potentially upgrade to an A370M or an A350M GPU in case that's your bag of chips, unless you want a full desktop card, in which case the A770 is at its cheapest price that I've ever seen it. Currently over on Newegg, you can get the Phantom Gaming version for $269.99. That's a heckin' price. That's only 20 bucks more than the A750's discounted price. That's, that's crazy. I don't know what's up with the Phantom Gaming cards continuously being on sale, but that is a good price and a good feature set that AMD might be rolling out to their motherboard sometime soon as the ability to support those 24 and 48 gigabyte RAM sticks. We talked about this in yesterday's episode of Hot News that some AMD motherboards can get into the BIOS, but none of them can boot. And it turns out from some leaks that we're getting that AMD is likely gonna be rolling out this support in their May version of the BIOS for their AMD motherboards. And another update that AMD is making to their motherboards is making them more affordable. Finally, an AMD employee tweeting out that AM5 is now at the price point of $125, just like they initially initially promised it should be. However, that's not quite true, especially with the fact that you look at it, it's $125 ASRock motherboard on sale. So it's it's $124.99 after a $15 discount. So it is not technically $125, even though it's gotten down to that price point. It does make the upgrade to AMD's latest setup more affordable and more in line with what they were envisioning. This is not the latest A620 chipset that we're expecting to come out later this year. This is still on B650, so it's actually pretty robust. It is missing a few features, like it only has four SATA ports instead of six. It only has seven USB ports, four of which are USB 2.0, and then it only has two RAM slots instead of four. So there are compromises that you have to make, but if you add that together with something like a 16 gigabyte kit of RAM, as well as the cheapest 7600 CPU from AMD, then you're looking at an upgrade price of roughly $411. Plus you get Star Wars Jedi Survivor for free included in that, getting the effective cost down to about $350, which is still pretty hefty to get on a brand new platform, but makes it considerably cheaper than the $600 that it was when the 7600X launched. So it's getting down 
the prices are decreasing. AMD hasn't kept their promise on that. Even if an AMD employee wants to tweet that they did, it's it's still not there. I still think we need prices to come down a little bit more, but it is nice to see more affordable setups happening. Does this get you to upgrade? Are you looking at this? Let me know again down below in the comments. I'll let you know that I'll see you back here for hot news on Monday while you enjoy your weekend breakfast without me. Except for you can't do that because you can only have breakfast while you're watching hot news. It doesn't matter what time of day you're eating a meal. If you're watching hot news, it's breakfast. I'll tell you that much. It's facts.